Hey guys, I'm Shenna. I want to thank you so much for joining us today for Upper Room Church Online. If you liked today's message and would like to hear more, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope that you will take the time to visit our website at upperroompensacola.com to get plugged in. While you're there, you can also request prayer and give a financial donation. We can't wait to connect with you. Today, Pastor Nathan is bringing an encouraging word. So settle in and prepare your hearts to receive what God has to say to you. We love you and are praying for you. Hey, Upper Room friends and family. It's so good to be with you. I just, just want to tell you how much I appreciate you spending your Sundays or whatever day it may be uh, here with me and uh, Upper Room Church. And it's just been awesome to be together. And one of the things that I've really loved about the last couple of weeks is that even though we haven't been physically meeting, we're very much a part of one another's life. And being able to spend this time together online, and um, if you were here last week, it was our, our first gathering in person, and, and it was just an amazing day. And I want to thank everyone who came out, and uh, I just look forward to the future. I know the best is still ahead, and, and I wanted to share with you uh, just kind of what God's been putting on my heart every week. You know, normally I, I, I do series or take a topic or a book of the Bible and we spend a few weeks on it. And lately I've just tried to give you exactly what's kind of going on in my, in my headspace. And that's kind of scary sometimes to think about. But, you know, we live in some incredible times right now. It's pretty amazing. I, I kept seeing this, this meme over and over on social media this week. It's this, this person's like squinting, looking out kind of got their head on their on their or hand on their head like this and on the bottom it says trying to see what chapter of revelation we're doing today and I thought man that that really describes the last couple of weeks there is a lot going on in the world um, we've you know we went from a virus to now there's extreme civil unrest in our nation to a tropical storm and it's just seems it can be overwhelming it really can be overwhelming and and I want to just share with you a, a story in the Bible that really Jesus told and it came out of a question that one of his disciples asked him. And, and his, the, the question was, you know, Lord, how are we going to know when we're living in the last days? What's it going to be like? How are we going to know when you're coming back, when, when all this is beginning to take place? And, and, and what's it going to look like? What's it going to feel like? What's going to be happening? And in Matthew 24, Jesus answers that question for his disciples. And so in Matthew 24, he talks about pestilences and he talks about wars. He talks about racism, kingdoms against kingdoms, races against races. He talks about uh, sto you know, pestilences and, and, and storms and all this stuff. He's like, this is what's gonna be happening in the world. And I think he told it to his disciples that because he didn't want them to be scared. And then in Matthew 25 is where I want to pick up today. He gives two parables in that chapter. And basically it was, it was still, he was answering the question of how should we live in a world that seems to be going crazy? How, what's, our, what's our response? What should my response be when I see all this stuff happening, when I turn on the news and it seems, uh, you know, it, it seems more scary than it is encouraging at times, what should be my response? And in that, he, he gives in Matthew 25 some incredible principles. I heard a story one time about two churches, and they were right across the street from each other. And every Saturday, they, one of the members of the church, they would come up and they would change the signs on the, on the road. And so they tried to keep them, you know, similar. And so this one Saturday, they were up there, they were changing the signs on, on, their, on their church right there on the road. And, and the, one, the one church put on their sign, the end is near. And then the other church on the other sign, he, they put on there, turn yourself around before it's too late. And so as they, when they got their signs finished on Saturday, there was a car going by and the car rolled down the window and said, y'all are just a bunch of fanatics. You're crazy. You're a bunch of freaks. Rolls the window up and takes off. And the two people look at each other and they hear the wheels just screech and then a, a big splash. And they looked and said to one another, maybe we should put that the bridge is out on the sign. 
And, and so sometimes when we, when we talk about the end of times and we talk about what's the world going to be like, the end is near, it can cause us to get, get really fearful. And Jesus says we should have the opposite approach to that. Jesus says it's, it's not really what's going on around you. It's, it's how you respond to it. And he tells these two stories. And I want to just pick up in Matthew 25, verse 14. It's called the parable of the talents. Again, this is Jesus' response to this is how you should react. This, is, this should be your perspective. When you see wars, when you see trouble, when you see viruses, when you see all this stuff going on in the world, this should be your response. And he talks about the kingdom of heaven is going to be like a man who goes on a journey. Verse 14, who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two talents, to another he gave one talent, each one according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put his money to work and he gained five more. So also the one with two talents, he gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent, he went off, he dug a hole in the ground, and he hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned, and he settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five, said, Master, you've entrusted me with five. See, I've gained five more, 100% return on the investment. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'm going to put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents, same thing. He showed the two. He said, I've gained two more, 100% return. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few. I'm going to put you in charge of many. Come and share your master's happiness. <clears throat> and now we get to the third. The man who received one talent. Master, he said, you know what? I knew you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. I went out and I hid your talent in the ground. Here is what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown. I gather where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have at least put my money in the bank, right? Put it in a money market, make 3% on it or something so that when I've returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one who has 10. For everyone who has will be given more and he will have an abundance. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. And throw the worthless servant outside into the darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now that's a pretty hard parable. And there's a lot in there. And, 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 and so I want to unpack it. And there's really just three things I want to give you out of this. But the, the biggest at face value, what I want you to see before we jump in, is that this parable reminds me that every single person on the planet has a gift. You have a talent. And this parable is about money but it's not about money. It's about the treasure that God's put inside of you. And so every person is an image bearer. Every person on the planet, all seven and a half billion, you've got something inside of you that God placed there. It's something that you do that only you can do. It's, it's a gift, it's an it's a instinct, it's a calling. Uh, and, and, and God has placed these things inside of us. And so this parable is not about how we manage money. And, and, and what I want you to see, it, the other part of this too, is, is that again, it looks like that these, each person got a different amount. You know, the, the one guy got five talents. Now that in, in modern day money, that's, that's over $2 million, five talents. And then the other guy got two talents and the other, so, so they all got different amounts. But what I want you to see is they all were given something of great value doesn't so much matter about the exact monetary value. What this story means is that what God has placed in your life, what he's entrusted you with, is worth something far beyond and a lot of times what we even realize. That God has put this treasure in you. God has given you the ability to do what you do, how you do it. He's gifted you. And so in return... The way that we gift God back is how we steward what he's placed in our life. 
And so the one guy had five, he doubled. The other guy had two, he doubled. But the guy with one is where, is where we're going to learn. Because we don't really know much about the two guys that doubled their talents. We, we're not given a lot of information on them. All we know is that they took their, what they had and they doubled it. They made a profit, a hundred return. That's a pretty good investment. But we were given a, a glimpse inside of the mind of the guy who hid his talent. And what I'm finding in life is how we view things is how we do things. How we view things is how we do things. And so we're given a, the perspective. I'm gonna, I want to call this message three perspectives. We're given three perspectives on the guy who didn't use the, the gift, the talent that he had, and what was going on in his mind. Why did he hide his talent? Why did he react in fear? Why did the other two invest what they have, had and, and, they, and they made more? But this, this one guy... He did the opposite. He reacted. He reacted in fear. And so we're given these, the, in, in one verse really, we're given the inside of, of the mind of the dude that, that hid his talent, that, that was scared, that was fearful. And, and this is what I know about life. And I think that when we, when we stand before God, it's not going to be the things that we did that we're going to regret. It's going to be the things that we didn't do. You know, we talk a lot about sins of commission, stuff that we commit, things that we do, but there's also sins of omission. That's, that's opportunities that we didn't take. That's things that we omitted. It's the good, it's the, it's the chances that we didn't take. It's, it's, the, it's the standing up for the, for the person that needs us to stand up for them and we decided to be quiet. It's, it's being a voice for the voiceless. It's, it's the good that we know we should do and we don't do it. And so let's look at the mind of what was going on in this, in this, in this, the person with one talent. And he says, we, we don't know a whole lot, but we do know this. The man that received the one talent, he said, master, I knew you were a hard man. And so he describes God as hard. That word hard, or some, some translations is different. It's, it's skeleos in the Greek. It's where we get the English word skeleton. And so the, the, the person that hid their talent, they viewed God, number one, as impersonal. I think that's the biggest lie that the enemy is using right now. Because I've heard it in my mind. I've heard it whispered in my, in my ear over and over and over. Maybe you've heard it too, that God doesn't care about what's going on in the world right now. God's got bigger things to do. God, God's not concerned about the injustice that's happening in our world. God's not concerned about this virus. God's not concerned about you losing your job. God's not concerned about your kids going crazy and now they're at home and, and, and you're having to figure out how to be a, a mom and a teacher or a dad and a teacher and a provider. It's that whisper, that subtle whisper that God's impersonal. He's a skeleton. He's hard. He's harsh. He's all about the law. He's all about, it's very black and white. He's just not involved in my life. He's not involved with what's going on. And, and, and so the perspective that the guy had that wasted his talent was that God was not approachable. God was impersonal. But I have to believe the other two, it was the opposite. They involved God in what they were doing every day. They involved God. And I want you to know that God is so much involved in your life. And a lot of times it's just hard to see it, especially when we turn on the news and it looks like the world's going upside down and we don't see God in all of what's happening around us. But I want you to know God is very much involved. God wants to be involved in every decision that you make. God wants to be involved in the areas of your life that, that maybe you, you feel like you're having to lead on your own. So, sometimes the greatest prayer that we can pray is, Lord, just, just help me with this. God, I, I want to involve you in this decision. I, Lord, I, I've, I, have, I have ran it a hundred ways in my mind and I really need your help with this. And so our view of God is so important. It's the difference between, I've heard it said that the same sun that melts wax hardens clay. Do you see God in your circumstances right now? Do you, do you feel like God's involved in your life or do you feel like he's at distance? Because if you, if you do, you're listening to the wrong voice. 
This guy was listening to the wrong voice. He, he seen God as this far off CEO in the corner office that nobody talks to. Maybe we see him at Christmas, you know, for the, for the Christmas party, but nobody's, no, nobody can speak to him. I, I have to believe that God is the opposite, that he's a good father, that he's as close as the mention of his name, that he is with you even right now in this moment, he's by your side and he's involved in your life. And sometimes we just gotta pray that prayer, Lord, help me see, help me trace you when I can't see you. Help, help me connect the dots because I really need to know that you're involved right now. That's a powerful prayer. And that's a perspective that I want you to have right now that God is involved. And then the other thing that we see because this, this, this person that wasted his talent, he's seen God as hard, he's seen God as unapproachable. The second thing he did because of that, he said, I was afraid. And I'm finding that when, when our relationship with God, when our perspective of God is that he's a very harsh person, is that he's, he's mad, he's not concerned with what's going on in, our, in my life, it breeds fear because it makes us feel like we're having to do all this by ourselves. It's, it's walking in the woods at night alone without a flashlight, without a person to help you, without any kind of direction. It's, it's, it, your mind starts playing tricks on you. But when you have the perspective that God is with me, that God is involved, God is in the world and he's working now more than he's ever worked, that, that, that when we know God is involved, instead of reacting in fear, because that's what this guy did, his, his, his future, all he's seen in his future was fear. The perspective that's going to cause us to, to really just freeze and, 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 and become paralyzed in our faith is when we fear our future. Have you been waking up fearful? Have you been going to bed fearful? Has fear tried to creep in your mind about what tomorrow's going to look like? What's next week going to look like? I want you to know that it's, it's all about perspective. And we're going to go through seasons of life. I mean, I, I, I gotta, I've been kind of fearful the last few weeks. I hit kind of. I think we've all been scared. We've all had moments where we want to just, just kind of retreat. But I, I want to encourage you to do the other thing. I want to encourage you to, to not live in fear, but to live with faith. Rather than fearing your future, I want you to know that your future is to be found. That, that, that you're going to walk through seasons of fear. You're going to walk through moments of fear. There's going to be times where you're going to have to face fear, but God is going to work something great inside of you. Now, look at what this guy did. He buried what he should have exposed. And because he did that, he exposed what he should have buried. He buried his gift. He retreated. He stepped back. And because he did that, he exposed his fear. The first time I was asked to preach a sermon on a Sunday morning, I was, I was serving at a church in Defuniac Springs, and uh, I was driving over there from Milton every single Sunday, and the pastor sat me down and, and he, one Sunday, and he said, hey, Nathan, I want you to share this coming up Sunday. And I said, well, that's a great idea. I love, I love the enthusiasm, but there's no way. Uh, you know, I, I can't do it, number one. I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I started giving him all these excuses on why I couldn't do it. And I'm learning in life the best excuses are good ones. <laughs> and I had a list of good excuses on why I couldn't preach on Sunday. And finally, I got down to it and, and I just looked him straight in the eyes and I said, I'm just, I'm scared. I'm scared of public speaking. I flunked out of public, ski public speaking in at, a, at a community college. Um, I, I, I don't like it. I'm scared of it. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, you know what, Nathan, you need to do it scared because it's a part of your future and this is what God has for you. And I think when it comes to life, when it comes to using the gifts that God has placed in our life, we're gonna to have to do it scared. We're gonna to have to face fear. We're gonna to have to let our gift rise up to the surface and we're gonna to need to bury that fear, not the other way around. And know that when we face fear, it's, it's just like you know every single antivirus and, and if you get bit by a snake and you've got the anti-venom do you know that in that ant like if you know the vaccine for the flu there's a little bit of the flu in that vaccine if you get bit by a snake there's a little bit of the of the poison from that snake and, and so the way it works is you expose yourself to it to build immunity 
And so what this guy did, rather than facing fear, he retreated. Rather than facing his destiny head on, he said, you know what, I'm going to just, I'm going to, I'm going to take steps backwards. And that's what I don't want you to do right now. That's the easy thing to do right now. Is it just stay scared? Is it, is it just kind of operate in fear? But I want to encourage you to go the other way with it. If it scares you, maybe it's a God idea. If it scares you, maybe that's exactly what God is leading you to do. If it's comfortable, it's probably not God telling you to do it. And so he retreated in fear. His perspective was wrong. I want you to rise up in faith and know that God has a future for you to be found. God has a future that's, that's gonna, it's gonna make sense of everything that you've been through up to this point. It's like the best movies, you know, the best movies, you don't actually know what's happening. You gotta watch it. And the more you watch it, the more it makes sense. I think life is like that. There's a lot of times where life doesn't make sense, but you just gotta keep moving forward. You got to keep pressing on. You got to keep moving forward in faith and know that God is going to make sense of all of it. You, you just can't retreat in fear. That's, that's not an option. Do it scared if you got to do it scared, but keep moving forward. And now here's the third thing. Here was the, the third perspective that the guy had that buried his talent. He had the wrong view of God. He didn't see God. He seen God as impersonal. He feared his future. He was scared. He woke up scared. He went to bed scared. He was operating with a, a, a scarcity, fearful mindset. Now, here's the third thing. He made safety and security his goal in life. It wasn't about investing and growing this talent. It wasn't about this exciting future. His goal was safety and security. And I'm finding that when we make that our goal in life, it's a trap. We have this term called financial security, right? You see the commercials. Hey, send me your money and we'll make sure you live on a yacht next to an island when you retire, sip, you know, sipping cocktails for the rest of your life. And, and so we're, we all chase after this, this, this illusion of, of security. We want to be financially secure. We want to be secure. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm learning now that that's a false reality. And that God never promises safety and security when we follow him. Honestly, he, 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 he promises the opposite. Hey, it's, it, follow me, Peter. I'll make you a fisher of men. You're going to have to leave your career. You're going to have to leave your family. Um, everybody's going to hate you. Uh, you you're going to have to follow me to the cross. You're going to turn on me. Uh, there, I mean, if he would have showed Peter all that was involved, he probably would have never followed him. And I'm finding when it comes to serving God, it, it, is, it is not an insurance plan. It's the opposite. It's you're going to find, you're going to face some scary times. You're going to face risk. You're going to be asked to do things that probably don't make sense. God's going to place things on your heart to do that don't make financial sense, that don't make any kind of sense at all. And so if we're chasing safety and security, Following Jesus is probably not what we want to do with our lives. But the other two, they weren't after safety and security. Their goal was risk and adventure. It was risk and adventure. It was, you know what? It's the way John Maxwell says it. I'm willing to give up all that I am right now to be all that I can be. I'm willing to invest it all. I'm willing to risk everything, Lord, if that's what you're calling me to do. And so we got to give up on safety and security and we got to make following God and live in a life of adventure and live in a life of risk. Make that the goal. This is not the time to retreat in fear. This is not the time to chase after safety and chase. And all those things are good and I'm not discounting those things. But what I'm saying is if we want to keep the perspective that God wants us to have in this season of life, we're going to have to take some risks. We're going to have to follow our heart. You're going to have to go with your gut. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to go off of instinct. Because that's what I, is missing in this story as I close. Is I noticed that the master, the, the, the guy that gave him the talents, he didn't tell him what to do with them. He gave one guy five. I went back and read it and read it and read it. He gave one guy five, the other two, the other one, and then he just left. 
And so how did they know what to do? How did they know where to invest? How did they know, okay, what's expected of me? What? I think the other two, they followed their instincts. They were led by the Spirit, the way the Bible. They, they listened for that still, small voice. The, the, the one that buried his talent was listening to the voice of fear. He, was, he had the wrong perspective. He was listening to the lies of the enemy and they're out there and they're loud right now. But I wanna encourage you, right? That's how, that's how we're gonna close in prayer is, is what is God speaking to me right now? And maybe it's so audacious, you just thought it was something else. Maybe you thought you lost your mind. But I'm noticing the biggest returns that have come in my life have been when I was willing to take the biggest risks for God. And so what is that risk? What is that adventure God's calling you to chase after. I want to read this last prayer it's, and then we're going, to, we're, we're going to pray together. It's by a guy named Francis Drake. It's called Disturb Us, Lord. That was the name of this prayer. Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we've dreamed too little, when we arrived safely because we sailed too close to shore. Disturb us, Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have followed and allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wilder seas, where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land will find the stars. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, God, that that you haven't called us to live this life on our own, that you've given us, Lord, and I know you've given us your Holy Spirit to be with us, God, that even in this moment right now, he's speaking. And so we open our hearts to you, Lord. We ask that you would speak into our life. And if we've been listening to the voice of fear, God, if we've had the wrong perspective, the perspective of safety and security and, and just reacting in fear, Lord, help us to just get rid of that mindset and perspective. Help us to see that you're involved in our life, even in the very small details. Lord, help us to see that our future is to be found and not feared, that you've got something great for us that's right around the corner. And Lord, help us to be people that follow after adventure, that are willing to take risk, that don't retreat to safety and security, but we're willing to burn the ships, to leave it all, to burn the plow, to follow after what you have for our lives. So Lord, give us the boldness and the faith to do that, to take the next step. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me today. And I hope that, I hope that you got something out of the word. And I'd love to see you if you wanna come and join us on a Sunday. We, we are um, gathering again, 1030 at the Beach Church location. We'd love to, to see you there. If not, I'll see you online. We love you so much. Have a great week. Thanks so much for joining us online today. We would love to connect with you. Please take time to visit our website and let us know how we can serve you. We love you and are praying for you. See you soon.